Hey everybody, have you ever wondered where little computer processes come from? Little baby programs? Well, today we're gonna find out. But first, some terminology. So you're a programmer, the things you create are programs, the things you write, the code you produce, those are programs. When you run a program, it becomes a process. It's important to keep straight the difference between programs and processes because you can have one program can produce many running processes that are just different versions of the same program. It's kind of like in an object-oriented programming language, how you can have one class and from that class, you can create many objects of the same class. Kind of the same thing, it's very similar. But I digress. The question for today is how are little processes created? But everybody knows processes are created by the program launcher, by the command shell, in the terminal, right? But that's kind of unsatisfying. How does one process create another process? How do we make little baby processes? In Windows, you'd use the Create Process API. And it's shown here, it's basically you give it a bunch of information, you tell it what program you want to run, and you give it some properties, some attributes, and it just runs the process. There, I did it. I gave Windows-specific programming advice. Are you happy? Because it kind of hurt. It just hurt just a little. D don't expect this to happen very often. If you're on just about any other operating system, Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD, you're gonna use fork. And I know it's not immediately apparent why a function that creates processes is called fork, but it'll make sense in a minute, maybe. In any operating system that's based on Unix, processes all come from a single process. You start up the program and there's an initial process. It's usually called init. Sometimes you'll see it'll be called kernel task or something like that. But there's an initial process that creates all other processes. When you look in the process list to see all the running processes, these are all really clones. They're all clones off of that original process. And so when you call fork, you're just requesting a clone be made of your process. In this example, I call fork, and now instead of printing out one hello world, I get two, because I've got two clones. I've created a new process, it's a clone, it's an exact copy of the original. Well, it's not quite identical. They actually have different process IDs. So a process ID is the number that the operating system uses to keep track of each process, and when I clone the process, the new process, the child process, actually does have a new process ID. And you can see that here, I've printed it out and you see that they actually do have different process IDs. So you can look at all the processes that are running in your system using PS, using top, or some kind of graphical task manager, activity manager. Every operating system's tools are a little different, but every operating system has utilities that allow you to actually look at what's running on the system. The other thing I should point out is that all of these systems are gonna show you a list of processes. We think of it as there's, there's this list of processes, but even though they show you a list, it's more helpful often to think about this as a tree. It's like a big family tree of clones. Each process in this list has a parent, that's the process that cloned it, and each process can have multiple children. So when a process calls fork, it's creating a child process. The original caller is the, is the parent, the new process is the child. As we've mentioned, they have new PIDs. Basically, each process then can call fork a lot of times and you can create a lot of different processes. And I guess that creates family trees that kind of look like a fork, I guess. So maybe that's why it's called fork. But the point is, is Unix is really family friendly. It's all about relationships. It's all about these, these bonds we form with our process family. But clearly my example so far isn't very useful. And that's because both processes do the exact same thing. Right? The problem with clones is that usually when you create a new process, you don't want that process to do the exact same thing as the original parent. You want it to do something else. You want to sort of create this child to have it do something useful while the parent is busy doing something else. And also from this example, it's not even clear that the child and the parent know which one's the child and the parent. So how do we do this? Well, for this, we check the return value of fork. Fork returns different things to the parent and to the child. To the child, it returns zero. To the parent, it returns the process ID of the child. And that may seem strange to you. Why return the process ID of the child to the parent? And why does the child just get zero? Well, the reasoning goes something like this. The child usually just needs to know it's the child. And so zero is an easy thing that we can check. We can just say, hey, is, is, did fork return zero? Then I'm the child. The parent, on the other hand, has more responsibilities as parents always do. And parents actually have to keep an eye on their children. So if I'm a parent process that's created a child process, I may need to wait for it. I may need to check on its status and see if it's still running. I may want to communicate with it and get some data back from it. And you know, if it's just taking too long, I might just need to kill it. This video got a little dark all of a sudden. The point is, is processes are all about relationships. They're one big family with serious issues. 
But the point is, is that now I know who's the child and who's the parent, I can actually make the child do something different from the parent with a simple if statement. All I do is say, if fork returns zero, now I do something different. So I can, in this case, I can print out something different than hello world and so you can now tell that the parent and the child are actually not the same process. They're doing different work. So now this is a whole lot more useful. So that's fantastic. We can now run something different in the child than we did in the parent. What else could we possibly need? A lot, really, unless you plan to have all the source code you might ever need to run in a process in that original process, then this is a little limited, right? Because any clone, any, any clone we make actually has to already have the code that we wanna run. And that may not be very helpful all the time. That may not be what we want. And naturally, right about now, you're probably thinking, but really what I wanna do is I want my process to create another process that's running someone else's program. I don't have the source code, it's just it's a compiled binary. Maybe it's Microsoft Office for all I care, and I just wanna run it. How do I do that? But unfortunately, I'm gonna have to make you wait. That's all the time I have for today. And we'll pick up this conversation next time when I teach you how to make your clones transform into something useful, something like, uh, basically like another program that somebody else wrote. And I might even teach you how to turn them into zombies. And yeah, anyway. In the meantime, happy coding and I'll see you later.